good day to all of you today's topic of lecture for msc final students frequency limitations of conventional tools we are continuing this topic today we discuss or try to understand about the remaining two limitations second one is transit angle effects or transit time transit angle effects or transit time as we know that conventional tubes at microwave frequencies is the electronic transit angle between electrons applications if we are uh, if we are uh, seeing or using applications of conventional tubes at microwave frequencies then electron transit angle between electrodes have affect the conventional tube operation the electron transit angle is defined by theta z equal to omega tau z where tau z is nothing but transit time across the gap which is given by distance upon velocity of electron d is separation of separation between cathode and grid or separation between electrodes v0 is velocity of electron and capital v0 is dc voltage applied when the frequencies are below microwave range if frequencies are below microwave range then transit angle is negligible it exists at every frequency but its effect on the operation is negligible at microwave frequencies transit angle or transit time is large compared to the period of microwave signal if we compare the transit time with the period of microwave signal it is large and the potential between the cathode and the grid may alternate from 10 to 100 times it changes between 10 to 100 times during the electron transit the grid potential during the negative half cycle thus removes energy that was given to the electron during the positive cycle energy given to the electron in positive cycle is removed in the negative half cycle and what happens due to this electron oscillates back and forth in the cathode grid space the electron oscillates between the electrodes and return to and return to the cathode and what is the overall result overall result is that the transit angle affects to reduce the operating efficiency of the battery that means it affects the operation that is operating efficiency of the battery the degenerate effects becomes more serious when frequencies are well above 1 gigahertz if frequencies are above 1 gigahertz then these problems are very notable and very much affects the operation once electrons pass the grid suppose that electrons pass the grid they are quickly accelerated to the cathode by the high plate we are applying high pla high plate voltage to the electron uh, high plate voltage given by externally and it accelerates the electron when the frequency is below 1 gigahertz the output delay is negligible in comparison with the phase of the grid that means the effects is does not show any notable effects on the operation of the conventional tubes this means that the transmittance is large what is reflectance or reflection of this that transmittance is large real quantity which is usually transconductance zr 
at microwave frequencies at microwave frequencies the transit time angle or transit angle is not negligible so we see that due to this output decreased from preceding analysis it is clear that transit angle effect can be minimized by the how we can minimize transit angle effect that we see in next articles when we see the operation or fundamental principle of cluston here is only given mentioning here that suppose first we accelerate the electron beam with a very high dc voltage suppose first we accelerate the electrons with high dc voltage and after that velocity modulation is taken then this process can minimize the transit angle effect and this effect or this principle is used in clustrons and magnetrons this principle is used in magnetron and clustrons that we try to understand in next lectures okay so we understand what is the angle effect now the last topic or last point of this article is third one gain bandwidth product limitation gain bandwidth product limitation is also affects the operation of conventional tubes in ordinary vacuum tubes in ordinary vacuum tubes the maximum gain is generally achieved by resonating the output. if output is resonating in then output circuit is shown below and how resonating the output maximum gain is generally achieved for a pentode is shown here output tuned circuit output output tuned circuit of a pentode okay this is a transconductance model or equivalent gmvz current rp plate resistance lcr resonant circuit and we are measuring output Yeah, that is shown by notation here. Yeah. In the equivalent circuit, it is assumed that R P is greater than omega. L. R P is greater greater than omega. L. The load voltage is given by the load voltage is given by Z M V Z is current. This is current, and Z plus Z omega C minus omega omega L. Here, R P and R are in parallel, and L C R is also in parallel. So easily you can see that what is the equivalent resistance and what is the current in this circuit. So Z M B Z upon Z plus Z omega C minus one upon o, omega L. What is Z? Z is equivalent to parallel of parallel combination of R P and L. Okay. And frequency is given by one upon two pi under root L. And the maximum voltage gain at resonance. if we calculate if we try to calculate the maximum gain it is gm upon c it is gm upon c if from here we see this is voltage and maximum gain is vl upon vc and at resonance this term becomes c so a maximum equal to gm upon c And what is a maximum? A maximum is V L upon 
since the bandwidth is measured at the half power points we know that bandwidth we measure at the half power points the denominator of equation must be related by z equal to we know at resonance equal to omega c minus 1 upon n if we taking the roots of this quadratic equation you can easily calculate omega 1 equal to z upon 2c minus under root z upon 2c square plus 1 upon l c as you know how to solve the quadratic equation by solving the quadratic equation you can easily calculate these roots omega 2 equal to z upon 2c plus under root z upon 2c square plus 1 upon l c these are the two roots of this equation now bandwidth is nothing but the difference between omega 2 and omega 1 and it comes z upon c because z upon 2c square is greater greater than 1 upon lc and this approximation bandwidth is simply z upon c hence the gain bandwidth product what is your aim we are trying to understand about the effect of gain bandwidth product on the conventional tubes so am into bw equal to because bw is on g upon c and what is am am is gm upon capital z hence this term gain bandwidth product is gm upon c what we know here that gain bandwidth product is independent of frequency gain bandwidth product is independent of frequency for a given tube a higher gain can be achieved only at the expense of a narrower bandwidth if bandwidth is narrower then higher frequency higher gain can be achieved if we want to higher gain then for that case narrower bandwidth condition should follow this restriction is applicable to a resonance such kind of restriction can be applicable to resonant circuit only in microwave devices in microwave devices either retrained cavities or slow wave structures are used in microwave devices in the place of resonant cavity resonant circuits retrained cavities and slow wave structures retrained cavities and slow wave structures are used to obtain possible overall higher gain over a broad bandwidth if we want to high gain of the conventional tube at broad bandwidth at microwave frequencies then slow wave structures or retrained cavities can be used but these are not possible for conventional tubes in microwave devices in microwave devices we use these uh, devices because these are uh, for microwave devices and the, uh, these devices can uh, these uh, circuits cannot be used in conventional tubes this is the method how we achieve the high gain for microwave devices by using the retrained cavities and slow wave structures this restriction is possible this restriction that it is not possible to generate oscillations of frequencies in the triode above the range because in triode or conventional tubes this is not possible to achieve oscillations okay so we see how there are limitations and there are some restrictions in the operation of conventional tubes in next lecture now we start first topic of your syllabus given klystron what is klystron and what is its operation okay thanks to all of you